Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a huge change to one of the modern decks, essentially the expertise decks in modern no longer exist because of a change that will happen after Armor Ket. Armor Cut has split cards and starting from Armor Ket, they are going to streamline the split cards a bit. So they have essentially when you play a split card, you can play both of them. And this has happened with many, many cards, including Brain in a Jar, Scepter, Isochron Scepter, and most recently the Expertise. So two of the more recent modern decks, Bird Brain and Fuse Reanimator, are not decks at all. So the I agree with the chains, because it makes it simpler for a player. When we were trying to explain the combo, which at the time did work, about 50% of the audience didn't understand how it worked because it's kind of illogical and it's based on the rule books. But I'm gonna show you multiple decks that relied on this combo and no longer exist. The funny part about this, or not the funny part, but the part that I caught on was they did it very quietly and they did it in such a way that punished MTG Finance the most they could possibly punish. So they could have announced this before the expertise were released, uh, but no, they allowed the decks to exist. And I'm positive they were, they knew about this interaction because this interaction has been brain in a jar in a set just in stone standard has this type of interaction. Now, when you talk about Brain in a Jar, or even all the way to Isochron Scepter, this type of interaction has always existed. Uh, in modern, it's been very important, even before the expertise in Boom and Bust, Restore Balance, and most recently, the Unbanned Ancestral Visions. The way they announced it, and when they announced it, made sure that the MTG Finance people would go ahead, buy the split cards from Dragon Maze, Beck and Call has spiked a ton in price, as well as the other one, Breaking and Entering. So this is the deck. Uh, um, it is the deck that won the Modern Classic in Richmond. Todd Anderson played it, uh, and it relies on getting Grigel Brand and reanimating it. So you play the Expertise, you, sp you call the uh, Breaking, but you get the Breaking and Entering, you get it fused, and then you play a Grigel Brand. I'm not gonna go ahead and explain how this used to work. Well, it actually still works until Armor Kit is released. So you can play this deck for a little bit more in modern, but then the band hammer, well, it's not even a band hammer. Let me explain why this is no longer surprising. So when I interacted with Wizards of Coast, the first person I, not the first person, but the first management person I talked to was their head of legal counsel, which was in my opinion, quite unprofessional in the way she was behaving, but that is my opinion. Uh, eventually, I talked to the Hasbro, I believe it's Hasbro Outside Council, which then things got serious. And one of our discussions was how could these cards still have value? How could they have value if it was a unregulated market and they could reprint them anytime? And why Wizard of the Coast didn't reprint them all the time? And he was comparing it, so the Hasbro attorney the outside council was comparing to Star Wars toys. I think that's what he, you know, he wasn't into magic. He didn't understand what magic was and he didn't understand mm -hmm. why it would be so valuable to counterfeit it. But anyway, um, so at the end of the day, it came down to just the fact that it was not being reprinted at that time, but it was suggested to me things would change and it would change quite fast, such that the secondary market wouldn't be an issue anymore and counterfeits would not be um, as you know, as big of a danger to... So I was asking them about, you know, okay, how for the long term of the game with the counterfeits and magic cards getting more and more expensive, aren't there just gonna be more counterfeits? They told me not to worry about it. There's not gonna be more counterfeits and now would be you know a good time for them to talk about you know counterfeit protection as well as security measures 
and things they can do to offset the essentially they never mentioned the secondary market but what i got from the conversation was they would reduce the secondary market such as reprints what i understood was they would reprint a lot and they would ban a lot and they would keep it very very fluid in terms of how they did stuff and this tells me exactly what it is here you have a deck you have the secondary market reacting to this deck existing or two of the decks existing as i so showed you uh, a few different variants there's a second variant um, but you can use brain in a jar you can use expertise uh, you can use the white expertise into your ancestral visions uh, overall a very very strong strong mechanic and it's new and it ch changed modern it was doing very well and it was a brewer it was the rogue brewer's paradise in terms of how awesome and quick it was but anyway what i understood was sell your magic cards and that's exactly what i did i made a video on my old channel saying oh crap i need to sell my magic cards and i showed um, all my dual lands i wasn't using i showed all the force of wills and the the tr thing i tried to say at the time and maybe not as clear but like i watched my old videos and i think i've said it pretty clear as clear as i personally could have at the time reprints are coming changes are coming and they are going to be a lot faster uh, so every single one of those cards in modern and that modern counterfeit chinese pack has been reprinted uh, our value tamagoyf cavern the fetch lands the zendikar fetch lands um, Liliana, Snapcaster Mage, they haven't left any of them. So right now, the scenario is, yes, you can get counterfeits for like really cheap, but if the magic card prices go down, would it just be easier, better, safer, and overall a better experience for you just to buy a Lily, a real one with a sticker on it? I would suggest yes. In many cases, it just would be. So at the very end of the day, I feel like the fact that they move so fast on this new deck. Remember, this is a brand new deck. They knew what the expertise does. The excuse that, oh, we didn't know what it would do. That doesn't fly with me because we have had Isochron Scepter and Fire and Ice for the longest time. And we've had Brain in a Jar still in standard. And we have two modern decks and expertises that have done extremely well when they first came out. Uh, they're not OP in my, in my opinion, but they are not bad decks. So to wait when they waited, it's not like they pulled the trigger. It's like, oh, crap, expertise, ban. Or, oh, we're going to change the rules now. They waited until Amor Ket, which is the ideal time to punish the MTG Finance community who started investing and in speculating in these cards. And that, in my opinion, has a lot to do with the secondary market. And the secondary market wizard coast wants not just a large piece of it they want all of it they want all of it and as a counter against counterfeits it works extremely well because if they continue to reprint continue to reprint continue to reprint that's the demand of counterfeits will always be there or as they call it proxies uh, in my opinion they're very similar um, if a proxy is highly realistic then you know it's kind of a counterfeit but the overall, I mean, the, the crazy part about this whole scenario is they got it right. I think they, they got it right. That the thing is you got to reprint everything. You got to put the secondary market on its back sometimes and just say, hey, nope, no speculations, no beck and call. Nope, not going to do it. Boom. You know, no death and shadows, no lilies for you. Like, I think it's correct. Make it a player's game. And to do that, you have they have to have control of the secondary market. A unregulated secondary market gets us, you know, a hundred dollars blue fetch lands easily, uh, because you all it takes is one store, Star City Games. Let's just take that for, for example to buy all the fetch lands, and then just double their price, and then eventually they become that price. Where in, in fact, Wizards of the Coast can make a supplementary product, put it in the product as a rare non mythic. And then sell that product, make a lot of money for them, and still promote the game in a reasonable manner. Uh, so I, I believe this is a, another sign of such a rapid, such, I mean, they are not a company to be like, to make quick changes.
but this is a quick change and it just destroyed two different modern decks. So anyway, that's it guys. Uh, leave me a comment below if you agree, you disagree. It's kind of conspiracy wise, but I probably would title or something like that. But anyway, I think this is the way to do it is if you control the secondary market, the counterfeiters are much less likely to spend hundreds of thousand dollars on machineries because literally no one's going to want to buy, you know, a non-holographic lily or a non-holographic. And that's where I am today. Again, you can disagree, but that's my personal opinion. I just collect holographics and if I can change it to holographics, now my lilies and my tamagoyves, my tamagoyves all had a holographic stamp because at the end of the day, that's in, that's a nullist that actually is a security measure I've seen where they cannot duplicate it as well because it's extra cost and they're lazy and they do the minimal necessary to sell their product. So they're not going to go all high tech because there's no need to. Why make it Eternal Masters Force of Will when you can make a regular one from Alliance and under less scrutiny because there's less, you know, there's not the holofoil. It's like, where, where's the holofoil? And you know, that's a whole nother printing process. Anyway, that's my personal opinion. Uh, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.